Hey there everybody, hope your day is going well, Jacared with Old Skulls Gaming here, and welcome back to another Thoughtful Thursday with, well, even more entitled people. The world is definitely not short on entitled people. Yeah, so, before I get into my own story, as usual, I'm going to get into a handful of Reddit stories, because, well, there's some, uh, some short ones. But, anyway... Okay, now that I'm situated over here, the stories can just display here as, well, as I feel like editing them and so on, so on, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so, this, uh, the first story is, well, a long one, it says, Top Manager Wants People to Fund the Construction of His Summer Terrace. Really now. So, a bit of backstory. Chad, 45 male, top manager at the company where I work, has always been delusional. Thinks very highly of himself, places others beneath him, and has always had a tendency to obsessively adopt various methods of self-improvement. From extreme dieting and consuming supplements, to reading self-help books about successful success. You know the ones I'm talking about. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's... It, it, like, that was... Like, some... Like, initially... Initially, some of those books were very helpful, very good for people. But then, like, all these copycats came out and just essentially started scamming everyone. Just, oh, hey, let me give you... It, it's, it's essentially a 100-page a dissertation of success. And not actually telling people how to succeed... Just, oh, this is what success actually means to me. And let, let me write a 100-page essay about it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway. In the past year or so, his new obsession has been to become a popular oh, social media influencer. His idea of how to achieve that was to post every single thing about his life, including his divorce, relationship problems with his ex-wife, New dates has been on, photos of his child and all the activities they do together, and almost daily videos with morning greetings to his dozen subscribers. Yeah, you really do have to be careful with that, because there's a lot of uh, unsavory elements in the world. If, if you have absolutely no private thoughts, your life is going to fall apart very quickly. So, definitely be careful with that. Leave... Yeah, leave some things to yourself. Leave plenty of things to yourself. And only post things that you would want to actually like, put out there. That you would want a complete and total stranger to see. Anyway, ugh. But the centerpiece of his influencer career is his attempt to be some kind of relationship psychology expert. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. He organizes online lectures and pastors everyone to join and listen to his endless wisdom. Yeah, yeah let's call it wisdom. I thought, he, I thought he couldn't get more delusional. Then I saw his latest post and realized how wrong I was. A bit more context to understand the comments Chad's been getting to his post. This is happening right now in Ukraine, a country at war. Moreover, he posted this the day after... Rusia's most recent mass bombing, where about 40 civilians were uh, unalived, and one of the targets was a children's hospital. Really? That's, uh, that's, uh, terrible. Now to Chad's post itself and the comments he got. Dear friends, I invite you to take part in a new interesting project. As a child, I had a dream to have a large, beautiful country house with a magnificent terrace, so that I could come there with my family, relax, enjoy the beautiful scenery, swim in the river, go kayaking, watch movies in an open-air cinema under the starry sky, and now there's a chance to make my dream come true. Okay. I already got a beautiful two-story country house near a river and everything. There is gorgeous, a beautiful house in the yard, close location to the water, Nature, but one essential detail is missing. That very summer terrace. And I'm planning to build it together with my beloved girlfriend. But I would like to do this by attracting external funding. Wow. Okay, so he's doing that. 
Okay, to everyone who has a desire to participate in this project and help in the realization of this magnificent dream, we offer the following. I will open an online jar for donations, see details below. You can donate any amount, but provided that the amount is more than 300, we promise you a wonderful weekend in this country house on a magnificent terrace with a hookah, barbecue, wine, open air cinema, interesting long conversations, swimming, and a kayaking along the river. Everyone who's interested in response to this idea, please take part. Let's make the dream come true. Summer Terrace, join the raising of funds. Wow, okay. Okay. Uh, definitely entitled. Like, why do you think you're, like, okay, at the very start, it was said, a top manager at the company where I work, so, I, I, I don't know how profitable the company is, I don't know what, what you do, or make, or supply, or whatever, but, shouldn't he be paying for that himself? I mean, well, okay, maybe divorce, alimony, child support, that can definitely drain things, but, wow, well, okay, well, well, why can't you just, like, save up, like, set, start setting aside money and say, like, hey, this is my dream. It would be one thing if you said, hey, this is my dream, this is what I want. Make sure to, you know, subscribe and follow me and all that good stuff. So that way you can follow the progress and see what happens. That's a lot better than, oh, hey, I need everyone who's interested to donate at least $300. And then we can, and then, and then I'll offer you one weekend at here. I mean, I'll, I'll enjoy it for the rest of my life. Jackass. <laughs> so, okay, the goal is 20000 Note the amount amounts of money have been converted not directly according to the exchange rate, but more based on Ukraine-USA median wages. Okay. <laughs> Still, that's... I mean, 20000 uh, just 20,000 U.S., god damn. I, I mean, I'll make just over that in a year, but, wow. Okay, uh, oh, UPD, I'm guessing, update. In the comments, people recommend me to either work harder or raise money for the purchase of military drones. But I am inclined to think that we live here, and now I want to create a certain value, that's all. Wow, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe you should work harder. Maybe you, you should set aside the money instead of begging other people to do it for you. Okay, comments. Chad's co-worker from an office in another country. Chad, I'm sure that you, as a top manager of the automation department of the company, are able to single-handedly cover the costs of building a summer terrace. If not, I invite you to travel to the Middle East to work in... 50 degrees Celsius heat for 15 hours a day without days off for 7 consecutive weeks. A second one will definitely open. <laughs> Chad, Chad's co-worker, the point is to attract people to a creative project, but working more and harder is a great idea. <laughs> Captain Obvious. Wow. Chad's friend of one. Chad, maybe raising funds for military drones is more important right now? Who knows what might happen? Well, okay, Chad's friend number one. I'm still for the terrace, although I understand that this raising the funds won't be as popular as the one for the drone. Chad's friend two. Chad, after the war, we will definitely build terraces, but now we should help the military, displaced persons, and those in need. I'm for the drones. <laughs> okay, how does this dude ha even have friends? Plural. Jeez. If you have the ability to help people in need, that should be the number one priority. I mean, I mean you know, I've said it before. You know, always take care of yourself first. Make sure that you are taken care of, so that way you have the ability to take care of other people. You can't pour, you can't pour anything from an empty cup. Make sure you have something in your cup, so that way you can. Pour in other people's cups, and, and like, yeah, you know, like 
because so yes, someone in an office in another country, you can single-handedly cover the cost. So why the hell aren't you doing that? Well, I just want people uh, to give me money. <laughs> Essentially, that's what it is. I want people to give me money. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um. Wow, this one's really short. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Stole my spot. P parking spot, I guess. Okay, I live in East Asia where land is limited, so parking spots are at a premium. I just bought an apartment and a parking spot. Just my spot was nearly 100k. Jesus. I, well, I mean, if, it, if it's worth it and if it's absolutely necessary, yeah, maybe. Okay, came home in a tropical storm, and sun was in my spot. I really had to poop, and there are no other spots. I'm going to get the guy towed after I double park him in. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, again, uh, this is, well, a, kind of a different situation, but similar at the same time. Make sure you are taken care of first. Then... Then, like, get this jackass towed out of your spot, because I'm, I'm sure there are signs that say, oh, hey, this spot is reserved. And, like, in, in an apartment complex, you know, there are, like, certain spots that are reserved, and maybe, like, a, a small hint, depending on the size of the apartments, there will be, like, reserved spots, and then those spots will be very specifically labeled, like, this spot is reserved unless you live in apartment such and such. You cannot park here. And and I'm I'm, I'm sure like there would be like covers for like uh, rentals like oh hey my car's in the shop for a week because something broke on it and I need a rental. And, and and I'm sure you can go to the the apartment front office or manager landlord office whatever. To say, hey, I have a rental, here's the paperwork for the rental for this week, so that way I can still drive to work and park in my reserved spot without getting towed. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and as for visitor spots, those, those might be labeled, might not be, depending on exactly how the parking is set up. At the very least, it can be painted, although that paint on the, uh, on the parking lot will wear out fairly quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, g get that guy towed and get him the hell out of your spot. So, okay. Well, you know what? That was such a short one. Well, let's go with a, a medium story now. So, how should I address this situation? Okay. I. What's the situation? <laughs> Hi, I, 19 female, am friends with 18 female, let's call her Jalen. Jalen and I have been through a couple of questionable situations where I've thought about cutting her off. Maybe, maybe you should. A little background, I have a very open relationship with my parents. I have no reason to be sneaky with them. They know what I do and where I go, and I just call to, and, and just call to check up on me and make sure I'm safe. Okay, that, that's good. That's what parents should be doing. <laughs> there was a time where she ghosted me for two weeks because she was mad. I tried to address the situation multiple times, and she would curve me and just tell me she made plans with the other girl in the group until I called her out on not addressing the problem with me and being immature. Wait, wait, what? Her problem was my parents calling me whenever we made plans with the rest of the group. They would only call twice and there would be a 10 second call max. That would put, really put icing on the cake for me. So, what's... What, wait. What's the issue? I, I don't get it. Okay, but today we went out to our local fair in 96... <laughs> A degree Fahrenheit in the bare sun. God. Yeah, I, I work nights and sleep during the day. It is difficult to try and sleep during the day. Uh, this this coming weekend looking, well, at least according to the forecast, going to be in like well into triple digit weather for the weekend. Which, I work the weekend. I work the nights. Yeah, but I have to try and try and sleep during the day. 
<sighs> Wish me luck. <laughs> well, then again. You haven't when this comes out, that'll already be long past weekend, so... Maybe it was triple digits, maybe it wasn't, I... I don't know, anyway. The stuff was even given out free waters. Okay, we get there and walk around for a, a big... I think you meant to say bit... Till we go to the busiest ride. I didn't get on any, but I was looking forward to this one. I told her we should take a break and sit under a tree with some water to cool off. But she insisted, and I went along with her, so we were both alone. After being in, like, 30 minutes, I got super lightheaded, dizzy, nauseated. I couldn't hear anything clearly. Water, 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 water. You need water. That is a... Well, that that is pretty much a heat stroke right there. <laughs> okay, I felt horrible, so I told her I was going to get some water and come back. I took a little break under a tree with some water and called my mom to ask if she could pick me up from how bad I felt. I called Jan to make sure she was okay with it, and she just met up with me and told me we were leaving. Like, wait, wait, did she tell you... Uh, Okay, okay, let, let's leave, or, okay, we're leaving. What, like, what was the attitude there? Because, a couple different situations. <laughs> she never asked me if I was feeling okay or what happened. She just walked in front of me furiously and ignored me the entire 20-minute walk to the car. <sighs> she was texting the whole time as well. I just tried to keep myself calm in case I did end up passing out. We got to the car, and she told me, I can't believe you had... To feel like this at the last ride. I wanted to get on it so bad. She said she was leaving. She even called her own mother to pick her up. Like, the hell is Jalen's problem? I apologize for feeling the way I did, but it wasn't my fault. I did my best to stay hydrated, so it's not like I did this on purpose. She also said, I hope you don't choose to get like this in... TX2K because it'll ruin the trip for everyone. Okay, TX2K is a racing event. Oh, at a drag strip that's in the bear sign all day. Oh, okay. Okay, so so you're planning to go there sometime soon. Wow. And she's like, oh, I hope you don't feel like... Uh, okay, at least... Because I've been to a couple of those, like, drag strip racing events... At least there are bleachers that you sit at. I mean, yeah, you might want to put in earplugs as well, because those, those drag engines, drag racing engines, are super goddamn loud. <laughs> but anyway, back, back to this. Okay, that was really the, uh, the cherry on top for me when she said, you don't choose to get like this, as if I wanted to pass out. Yeah, really. It, it, like, you passing out is your body's way of saying, what the hell? You, you, you're doing something wrong, essentially. I didn't bother answering her. She dropped me off and told me to text her how I felt. She hasn't reached out to me, and in my eyes, I feel like I shouldn't have to if I was the one feeling bad. I might be overthinking the situation, but a part of me tells me I'm not. Should I cut her off for being insensitive? Well, okay, uh, hold on. Did you say... Okay, you didn't say how long you've been friends, but maybe me a while. At the, at the very least, through high school, I'm guessing. You definitely need to, like, communicate with her and tell her, like, Hey, listen, I was feeling like crap because I was dehydrated standing there constantly. And, and the fact that you wanted to take a break, just, like, to sit down from the line for a little while to rest... Was was kind of like a your your uh, subconscious's way of telling you, take a break, take a break, cause you're losing a lot of fluid. You need to take a break, get some water, and then you can get back to whatever it is you were doing. Just because Jalen has a like a stronger constitution for standing in the sun than you do doesn't doesn't mean jack. You need to tell her, hey, this is what happened to me. I'm sorry, but this is what happened to me, and if that's a problem for you, then maybe we shouldn't be friends and take things from there. Like, I, I don't like using the word ultimatum, but that's essentially what you have to lay down. You have to lay down an ultimatum and say, hey, listen, 
you, you might be a little stronger than me for standing in the sun for a long time, but I'm not as strong as you in that regard. If that's going to be a problem for you, maybe we shouldn't be friends and see what she does. If she's understanding, you can still be friends, but if she starts freaking out and starts yelling at you, and, you know, I've, I've accidentally done that in a sense of, like, oh, hey, you can't do this, I can do it, why can't you? And later on, I realized, oh, that was a, that was kind of an a-hole thing to say. I, I really shouldn't be comparing other people to me. Because, I mean, they are, they are them and I am me. They're, we're two completely different people. It, and it wasn't really pointed out to me, and people just cut off contact without saying anything. If someone had said something, I would have been, okay, you know what? You're right, that was an a-hole move. My bad. You are you, and I am me. Let's continue being friends. But, yeah, not not everyone is like that. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully you and Jalen can still be friends. But, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Okay, so, you know, let's go with a couple of short stories, because, yeah, this, well, my story is uh, kind of lengthy. Sort of. I, I don't know how long it'll take me to get through, but, you know, let's just go with a couple of short stories. So this one is called Not Your Gym, Bud. Okay, so I went to the local gym, the cheap purple one. It's less than two miles from where I live. I think I know which one you're talking about. To do a workout today. As with any of these gyms, there are rows of TVs, and as I walked in, going to the ready-use lockers, I was looking at the TVs. I walked too close to a guy walking by who gave me a hard shove as he passed. I didn't even see him until I was shoved. Okay, so essentially you were screen locked. Not 100% paying attention to where you're going, but... I mean, it's... Yeah. Walked too close to a guy walking by. So... What the, the hell? Why, why the hell did he shove you? I, I'm a solid guy. Six foot, 220 pounds. So it didn't knock me over, but it was still a strong shove. I looked back at him in surprise, at which point he saw I was looking back and shouted, Watch where you're going! Quite loud. Dude. Like, if, if someone's... If someone's, like, invading your personal space, and, and, and how, like you said, you were screen locked, so you didn't really see, like, that you were getting a little close, he could have just, like, put up his hand, like, not shove, just put up his hand and be like, whoa, whoa, dude, dude, pay attention, personal space, please. Like, d doing that would be a hell of a lot better than shoving someone and saying, whoa, whoa, that's where you're going. Wow. Fortunately, a staff member saw this, as well as two other ladies nearby, and we told the, the manager. This guy has been doing this kind of garbage to other gym members and staff recently, so he will get his membership revoked. And I got my monthly fee refunded. It wasn't that big of a deal, but some people just want to do what they can to act superior over others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's quite the superiority complex. You know, like, like I said, the the better situation or the better thing to do in that situation is just put your hand up and like, whoa, dude, dude, you, you okay? You're okay. You're okay. You're getting a little close to me. Please, please don't, don't. Don't get into my personal bubble. <laughs> something along something along those lines, just like be polite and say, hey, please back up. Okay, okay, so one more. So it's a uh, guess one way only doesn't apply to everyone. I was at a very popular park today. Lots of people having picnics and parties so pretty busy. The road around the park is one way only with parking on the right side of the road only in a parking lot at the back. Everything is clearly marked. Okay, okay, fair enough. As I was driving to the parking lot, I noticed the two cars in front of me pulling over to the right. Why? Because the guy must have missed his friend's picnic when he was driving in the park, and instead of parking and walking or driving out the exit and circling back to the entrance, which would have taken two minutes, he decided to turn around in the parking lot and drive the wrong way. Ugh. Yeah, well, I was, uh, I was living in Denver for a while, and I lived, uh, like, on the front of the house was on a one-way street. 
Sometimes to just be sitting on the porch chatting and all of a sudden someone's driving the wrong way down the road and it's just, dude, we'd be yelling at him like, hey, dude, wrong way. And like, people would look at us like, oh, what are you doing? Oh. Then they'd see like a bunch of cars with their headlights pointed right at them, like all four lanes just pointed directly at uh, at them. They're just, uh, uh, uh. Thankfully, like where we were was... Like, not on the corner, but second house on the corner. And it was just like, oh crap, uh, turn here. <laughs> so now I probably could have moved, but instead I drove forward and stopped next to a car parked on the right, so there was nowhere for this guy to drive. <laughs> nice. Nice. I sat there until he backed his way out to the parking lot. Then, since I had all the time in the world, I sat there making him turn the right way and leave the park to circle around and drive the right way on the road. He felt entitled to drive the wrong way, I felt entitled to teach him a lesson. <laughs> nice, nice, because, I mean, it's it's a huge safety thing as well. Just, oh, well, like, uh, yeah, there's, I, yeah, yeah, there's a one way around the lot, and I'm, I'm guessing there's like an exit to a two-way road, that would go around and then back to the one way through the uh, the parking the park's parking lot. So now for for my own story, cause wow, yeah, some people get like a special position or some specific title, which really doesn't do anything. It's just like an a title, and they think. That they can just rule over all the peons that come through. That's essentially how they see everyone, as peons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, uh... Yeah, this story comes from my time, well, at the job I'm still currently at, the, the rent a cop job. And I'm... Ugh, I, I have to be careful about what I say about certain things, liability... And all that. I mean, the place itself was a like a food packaging plant. Like food would be like portioned out and then put into boxes, and then those bo like everything and everything had to be refrigerated, of course. And it would be like hauled off in in trailers that were insulated, could be refrigerated, and all that good stuff. Yeah, that's that's fairly generalized enough. And and the way my my rent a rent a cop job works is it's contracting essentially. Different different uh, companies or maybe sometimes individuals will request a presence, and then the company will provide that presence with some essentially warm bodies. <laughs> Now, this particular contract, I guess you could say, I, I worked I worked at that spot maybe once a month at most. <laughs> There'd be like two months I didn't work there, then a month I worked there one, one night, or one evening, or one day, depending on the shift. And uh, on this particular uh, evening shift, or... Swing sh well, it wasn't the grave shift, it was the the late evening shift. And, yeah, and traffic getting there was better than usual. It usually takes a while to get there, but I ended up getting there about 15 minutes early. And the, I saw a, a truck at the, like, the entrance gate, and, well, okay, it wasn't, like, a personalized custom one of like only one in the world it was just super unique and i'm just huh i, I don't recognize that one but what whatever yeah and, and the uniqueness of that truck is not important for later so like the, the way that this food packaging area thing worked is there were essentially two companies that worked out of it and and because of that Every single, every, all, all the paperwork was hard copy, and all, every single piece of paper had to be, like, filled out completely, and then filed in triplicate. I'm not even kidding. 
in triplicate hard copies. Yeah, and, and of course everything is on clipboards, because usually when a truck shows up, it's easier to just have the uh, like have the paperwork all you know, in hand, go out, start filling it out, and then like, okay, well, just need to finish up a few things, and then, okay, the paperwork's all done, file it all in triplicate, so on and so forth. But, I get to the guard, the guard desk, and I notice all the paperwork is there, which means, because there was two people that I was relieving, because it's like, the day shift is super busy, so they need two people on, then it's one person for the evening, one person for graves, and then back to, well, the morning and the day shift, and two people. So I asked the person who's in there, the, let's call him Kevin, again, that, that'll be relevant later. I asked him, so wait, hold on, all, all the paperwork's in here, what's up with the, the truck? And he's just, oh, well, we, we don't deal with that particular company here, we never deal with them. So we have to give them directions to a, a, different, a different plant. And, okay, fair enough, because, I mean, hell, but my first time at that location, the GPS dropped me off at a completely different business, different, different location, two miles down the mother effing road. Yes, so, the fact that someone was, was, uh, like, guided to the wrong location because of GPS... Not a big surprise. So, as, like, with a big rig, it was a, a lot easier just like, hey, we'll let you in real quick so that way you can turn around in the giant truck yard and then exit out. A lot easier than trying to back up something with five axles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially, like, essentially backing up would put you directly onto the road and there's, like, a drop-off like, if, if you're off by, like, two feet, the trailer will drop off and then fall, and then there will be a huge incident, and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Easier to just come into the giant yard, turn around, make a huge U-turn with five axles, and then leave. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was told that there was one, one... One of the refrigerated trailers was running, it had been loaded up, and they were essentially expecting it to be picked up later. And nothing else to worry about, or so I thought. So, like, ba barely like 25 minutes in, a, one of the truck drivers had come up and it was, you know, the same, the same company, brand, whatever, that, that had been, that was essentially already loaded up and the dude was dropping off an empty and picking up that loaded one. Okay, fair enough. So I fill out the paperwork for entry. Then, okay, well, you're good to go. Go ahead and go drop that off and hook up the loaded one. Not a big deal. So I file all the entry paperwork in triplicate. Then I start filling out the exit paperwork. Not filing in triplicate yet, but I just start filling it out. So that way it's just, okay, let's just... Now, you know, essentially, uh, like, okay, this is what the paperwork's going to eventually say. As you're exiting, there's a few last-minute, last-second details that I'll need to take note of, and then you can leave. Essentially, like, you know, truck number, trailer number, so on and so forth, just, like, for tracking purposes, because it is food. Definitely needs to be tracked down to the tiniest detail. Like, it, anything that comes from, from any, like, plant-based food, like olives need to be able to, uh, like, track, track every single jar of olives all the way, all the way back to the original tree that it was plucked from. Any, any cut of meat need to be able to track all the way back to the original, like, what, cow or rabbit or pig or whatever, or chicken or... Yeah, there, there's there's quite a few animals. You need to be able to trek it back to the original animal that, on even on the day it was born, you need to be able to trek it all the way back to that. So, yeah, yeah, essentially just 
taking down all the numbers so that way it's all okay. This the all the tracking will be in place just in case. So as the as that the regular the regular driver was dropping off the the empty trailer, picking up the loaded one. I hear the phone ringing, and I give the standard of oh, thank you for calling. This is uh, the security area, and this is me. Yeah, and I'm getting ripped a new one. What are you doing, turning away trucks that are supposed to be there? Yeah, and and thing is, the person on the phone was the the big dog boss of the entire the entire food packing place. Like essentially he was in charge of both companies that worked there and like if he says jump, you say how high. And, and he's yelling at me for turning away a truck. And there's only been one truck in the past like forty minutes that I've been there. I mean he showed up about half an hour after I essentially clocked in and it does take a while to not only drop off and unhook a trailer, but to hook up to another trailer and make sure it's raised the right way and make sure all the connections are good and everything's everything's done right. Yeah, yeah, so he's he's essentially doing his job and I'm just, wait, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, what are you even talking about? I, I've only been here for, what, 40 minutes? One truck has shown up in that time. It, it's that, it's, well, it's from that company that, that you know that's all over the place. And the sent, and, uh, he's dropping off an empty, picking up that loaded one. What, I, there's been no other trucks, I have not turned anyone away, I promise. Thankfully, me telling him that, calmed him down, because he realized that, I, because, like, like I said, I was only there for 40 minutes, and he's calling, essentially ripping me a new one, and I'm just, dude, what are you even talking about? Okay, oh, okay, okay, maybe you didn't turn him away, but he, he's been turned away twice now. So, I have your name, I'm going to relay that to the driver's dispatch, so that way, the dispatch can give the driver the right name, and... And that way he'll know he's at the correct spot, after all. Okay, sounds good to me. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be right here waiting. Then, then, like, in that period of time, the, uh, the, the guy who was, like, the, the, the usual, the normal guy, dropping off the, uh, the empty, picking up the loaded, essentially signs out, and then I get all that paperwork in triplicate, and... Okay, send him on his way. Yeah, remember that one unique truck? Not, not one of a kind, just unique and, oh hey, I've never seen that company here before. Yeah, that, that was the, uh, the truck that pulled up to the gate. And I'm just, wait, what? You were turned away earlier by the other guys. Huh, okay. And that driver just, like, pulls up and rolls down the window, and he's just, Hey, are, are you the person I'm looking for? Yes, yes, I am. And I'm just, okay, I, you know, CYA, cover your ass. Can I see, like, what whatever paperwork you have that shows, like, not only what you're delivering, but where you are delivering to? And yeah, I, I looked at the paperwork, and the address was absolutely correct. I'm just... Yes, yes, you are at the right spot. Here's your paperwork. But let's start getting you filled out for entry and then and then get all that paperwork in triplicate. And he ended up just dropping that trailer so that way I, I don't remember if it was like an over the road a uh, truck where like there's an actual like sleeping cabin in the back. Or maybe he just wanted to leave and go somewhere else for the night. I, I don't know, I didn't ask for details. It's like, oh, you're dropping this off? Okay, let's get the drop off. Okay, let's get all the entry paperwork filled out in triplicate. Then, okay, you're just dropping it off and leaving by yourself. Okay, more paperwork filled out in triplicate. And then, of course, whenever he would come back, just just the truck, no trailer. Another entry paperwork filled out. And filed in triplicate. God damn, that place really loved its paperwork. And and hell, as far as I know, everything was good. I mean, he was at the correct address. 
and the big dog boss said, let this guy in. So, uh, hey, everything, everything's good. Or so I thought. Because, I mean, yeah, like I said, evening shift, not, not the graveyard overnight, just an evening shift. I, I go home, I go, uh, I was up for maybe a couple hours or so. But I essentially just go to sleep, and then I wake, get woken up at the butt crack of dawn by, well, Kevin. <laughs> of all people, Kevin calls, and, and now it's his turn to start yelling at me. Why did you let that one truck drop off the trailer? We, I told you when you came in, we don't deal with that company here. Now that trailer is just sitting out here, and nobody has any idea why it's even here. Oh, well, actually, the big dog boss, you know, the entire reason that we even have a contract at the location, called me, yelling at me, because you turned him away. He was actually supposed to be there. And unlike you, I actually checked his delivery paperwork, and he was at the correct address for, for the... For the plant that we are at. Oh, uh, but but uh, the, uh, the, 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 then you should have filled out an incident report for when when he called to yell at you. I beg your f pardon. An incident report. Okay, so an incident report is when something happens. For instance, for instance, let's say you're sitting on the front porch of your house. And like, well, most residential areas, the uh, the speed limit is 25 miles an hour on that road. But let's, let's say if someone is just speeding down the road at 50 miles an hour, and just from one end of the street to the other, are you going to write an incident report because of that? No. No, I, absolutely not. Well, I mean, you wouldn't write an incident report at home, but, but the point stands, you wouldn't write an incident report for that. And, uh, well, un unless you're Kevin, apparently. And I, I actually worked alongside someone who wrote up an incident report because someone in the neighborhood was playing loud music. He was able to, like, drive along the, uh, like, the borders of the company, found the person who was playing the loud music, took notes on the description of the people, didn't confront them, didn't talk to them, didn't say anything to the effect of, wow, you guys are playing loud music, did not talk to anybody at the house, just wrote up an incident report, and went, well, okay, this happened because someone was playing loud music, and here's a description of what they looked like. What? Not only is that a waste of your time, and a waste of the paperwork, it's a waste of the supervisor's time, who has to read it, it's a waste of the, well, the company you work for's time that has to file that, and it's a waste of the... The con, like the the company, who, like asks for the contract, it's a waste of their time, because like okay, yes, yeah, someone was playing loud music in the middle of the day. How is that an incident? But I I digress. <laughs> but in in the situation I gave of the speeding car, let's say yeah, you know, let's say it's twenty five miles an hour and someone's going fifty miles an hour down the road, then they loot lose control, overcorrect, end up crashing through the fence, that would be an incident report. After all, that, that incident report will be along the paperwork that ex explains to whomever is in charge of company expenses, like, hey, this is why the fence needs to be replaced, because someone essentially drove through the fence and, and uh, made a giant hole in it. We, we need to secure the area. And however high up high up the chain the paperwork goes, that explains why there's why the expense needs to be paid. And the incident report will say, okay, on this day at this time, this happened. And now I even told Kevin as much. Just wait, hold on. What? What incident? I diffused the situation before it could become any kind of incident that would warrant a report. Well, the, the big dog boss didn't, didn't let us know that this trailer was supposed to be here. Okay, well, let me get this straight. You called me up at the ass crack of dawn 
to bitch at me because the lines of communication were not there specifically for you? At that point, Kevin just started sputtering, just... It, 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 I hung up on him, and I, I went back to sleep, because I was tired. And after I woke up, I, I ended up calling the, uh, the rental cup boss and just said, Hey, listen, don't ever schedule me there again, because I'm not putting up with that bull crap. Especially when the, like I said, the big dog boss, the whole reason that there's even, because he was the one who essentially, like, pays out the contract fees to the rent -a cup company, and then that's the reason we even get paid at all. And he said, let the trailer in, and then you're calling the bitch at me, because he didn't specifically tell you, hey, we have, you know, a one-time thing where this company is dropping off a trailer. With its own supplies and, I, I don't know, whatever the hell was in there, because it was sealed. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, so, well, quite a few less comments this time around, but still some comments to shout out. So, uh, let's see, we're starting with, well, seemingly, as usual, with a free Zeti on, yeah, Thoughtful Thursday 20, Entitled People 2. <laughs> yeah, free Zeti says, uh, thanks for the shoutouts. Well, hey, thank you for the comments and all the likes and everything else as well. <laughs> then, let's see, uh, Wei Chun, also on Thoughtful Thursday 20, Entitled People 2. Saying Wild Wednesday and Thoughtful Thursday are my f favorite favorite of your videos. Oh, well, thank you, thank you, Waitun, thank you for that. Yeah, I unfortunately only once a month, but that leaves me more time to get other things done. <sighs> hopefully, hopefully soon I'll be able to get some something done. Hopefully, okay. Now we have Frizetti again. This time. Yeah, being the first to leave a comment on uh, p the Pokemon First Gen, Pokotok 19. Some quick math. Freezer says, cool video. What are your favorite and least favorite Pokemon? Hmm, let's see. Favorite would definitely be a kind of a toss-up between, between Mew and Pikachu. Because Mew is just so adorable and so powerful. And then Pikachu, well, I... I'm, <laughs> I'm a 90s kid, so I, I grew up watching at least the, the four kids dub of, a, of Pokemon. And, yeah, I, I mean, even, even with all the things that they screwed up, and as a kid, I could definitely see something is not right. Those are not donuts, you idiots. But, <clears throat> anyway, anyway. Back, back to what I was saying. Yeah, Pikachu is definitely a, a top favorite of mine. Partly in, partly influenced by the anime. Outside the anime, probably Mio just because of how how godly powerful it is. I always loved bringing Mio along for any of the journeys. Let's see. Least favorite is is the useless pink blob Ditto. God. I I, I don't know exactly which Poke Talk I covered Ditto in, but. I'm pretty sure it's coming pretty soon, sometime in the future. Because, let's see, by the time this comes out... Right, Poketalk 21 is coming out next, just in a... Let's see, if this is Thursday, Friday, Saturday... Uh, two more days. So, yeah. I, I'm not sure exactly when I covered Ditto, but I know I covered Ditto at some point. God, I absolutely hate that damn thing. W once I get around to that Poketalk, y'all... You'll see why. <laughs> then, let's see, uh, Frizzetti, going way back in time, on, on Pokemon First Gen Episode 2, <laughs> Expanding the Family, Frizzetti says, Marathoning your series again and loving what's out so far. Oh, hey, thank you, thank you. And hey, if, if you want to re-marathon, you don't have to, like, search through videos, there's plenty of playlists on, that I've created on my channel, there's, like, the Pokemon, like, Pokemon First Gen Master, which is all, all the Let's Plays and all the Poketox, and even, even a, uh, even that Thoughtful Thursday, I forget, I want to say number three, 
or number two. I, I forget exactly which one. But essentially where I went, did that four waypoint scoring system with the four starters. Yeah, and, and of course, like I said, all the Let's Plays, all the Poké Talks. There's, oh, uh, the, there's a, uh, a playlist that is just the Let's Plays, Core Games and Stadium. There's one playlist that is just the Poké Talks. There's one playlist that's just the Let's Plays of the Core Games. And finally, one playlist that is just the Let's Plays of the Stadium. So, <laughs> Yeah, you know, lots of playlists depending on what you want to watch, but hey, it's all out there. So, yeah, fun, fun times. Okay, then, well, final, final comment for now. Let's see. Well, let's see. Last, last thoughtful Thursday, I did record it a bit later than usual. This time, I'm kind of recording on time ish, sort of. Yeah, complicated, but. Yeah, the, the final comment for now is uh, one from Frizetti. Right, because you, you left a comment while I was uh, streaming. <laughs> you left a comment on uh, Pokemon First Gen episode episode 54, the surfing route at long last. And, you, and Frizetti says, we're back to red, blue, yellow. Yes, yes. It, it definitely took a while to go through all the stadium things and the Poketalks and... Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Pokedoc 20 is now technically in the past, but in the future for when I'm recording this. T timelines are complicated. But, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. All, all the all the, uh, the stadium and Pokedoc were essentially a, a long filler to kind of represent. It, it definitely took a while to grind from a... Well, up to level 60s, which means everyone would have been level 57, I think? I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, just... <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a chore just to do that legitimately, and... Yeah, now, now I really don't care, but... Eh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, at, at least it's... You know, it's getting closer to the end. I still have... I, I would say about maybe... Five more super cuts, or maybe less, maybe more. I, I still gotta get a few of the super cuts together, but yeah, that's <sighs> that's something to talk about some other time once I eventually finalize all of the super cuts. There's still a number of things that I have to do before I say, yep, yep, super cuts are all done and over. Anyway, anyway, so. So, that is it. That is the end of this Thoughtful Thursday. So, if you have any suggestions for a Thoughtful Thursday, put it in the comment section down below. I'll give it a quick look, and provided I can talk about it for more than a couple seconds, I'll, I'll probably dedicate a Thoughtful Thursday sometime in the future towards it. So, I will see you there, and thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't hit the bell, so you can always be notified whenever I upload another video. And, of course, have fun.